Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe management of this very hard cataract. This is a cataract with grade 5 nuclear sclerosis. Fortunately, the pupil has dilated well. The main incision has been made. This is a side port on the left side of the main incision, 3 clock hours away. An air bubble is injected. Beneath this air bubble, tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. A little bit of adrenaline is applied, and now the dye is washed out, and we get this is a real time surgery. Within this short time, we have got very nice staining. This is because we have used an air bubble. If we inject tripando dye within the aqueous, the dye is diluted. It does not sit on the anterior capsule. It is spread all around and the staining takes longer time. I did a little bit of peritomy because I knew that there is going to be too much conjunctival swelling. So, a bit of peritomy has been done and now capsulorexis. See the size of the capsulorexis. The size of the capsulorexis is going to be about 5.75 millimeter, almost 6 millimeter because in heart cataracts, if we do a small rexus management of the pieces, large fragments and cracking the heart nucleus becomes very cumbersome. It is always better to get a rexus of this size in heart cataracts. Hydrodissection is done on point and then tap the nucleus and at another point and the, I know that the nucleus, nucleus is mobile, but I am going to take two Sinsky hooks and rotate the nucleus. This bimanual rotation causes minimal stress on the jonule. And now, the management of the nucleus. The tip must be exposed to about 1.75 to 2 millimeter in such heart cataracts to, to get adequate amount of ultrasonic energy. The tip is buried within the substance of the nucleus. Now, it goes through the substance horizontally towards the opposite equator and as it reaches near the opposite equator, the nucleus is cracked and we have got a very nice crack. Rotate 180 degree, sculpt once or twice, hold on side and divide the two heminuclei completely. And now, turn the heminuclei 90 degree and divide each heminucleus into two fragments. If the heminucleus is huge, sometimes we divide the heminucleus into three fragments. One heminucleus divided, we come to the other heminucleus, go through the substance, hold it very firmly and divide it into two fragments. And now see how to emulsify the pieces separating the two hemineu two piece fragments nicely and now tilt the fragments and go just at the apex or just under the apex and catch hold of the large triangular fragment, pull it centrally and start emulsifying. 
ultrasonic energy is 90 percent in this case in continuous mode, but the energy is being used very judiciously so that there is no wound burn and the handpiece is not at a particular point at the wound. The handpiece is rotated inside the um, hand and to you know to get more followability. If the piece is on the right side, the mouth is towards the right. If the piece is on the left, the mouth is turned to the left. In this way, in this way, we get more followability as well as we prevent wound burn. This is very important. And we allow some leakage of fluid through the main wound so that uh, there is the wound remains cool. It is very important not to cause wound burn in fake emulsification. Wound burn means there is more chance of leakage and sometimes we have to put sutures. Just for a small burn, we may have to put three sutures or four sutures. So this is a very tough thing to manage. So it must prevent wound burn, we must prevent posterior capsular rent, we must prevent iris injury and Probably the most important thing is we must protect the corneal endothelium. To protect the corneal endothelium, we must always be away from the cornea. We must hold the pieces, come to the center, be at the iris plane and emulsify the pieces. Nucleus is managed. Now in this case, there is uh, some cortex and the cortex is firmly adhered to the capsule. Strong capsulocortical adhesion in this case. Sometimes it happens. In those cases, we have to, you know, utilize sometimes. See the small nuclear fragment. Before we remove the cortex, we must remove this small nuclear piece. So, engage it at the port and bring it out. And then start, you know, removing the cortex. See, the cortex is not coming easily. We have to, it is firmly attached to the posterior capsule. It is coming, but with a lot of, you know, as if it does not want to come and you are holding it by the ear and pulling it. And now, this is the last portion of the cortex go through the side port. There is only one side port and the width of the side port is about 1.7 millimeter and the 23 go gauze Simco is introduced. This side port is wider than what we need in bimanual irrigation aspiration. But the side port is 90 clock and 90 degree away from the main wound and it will reduce some astigmatism produced by the main wound. And now the chamber, now the wound is enlarged little bit because I am going to use a B cartridge. Uh, here goes a single piece hydrophobic intraocular lens. This is a beautiful intraocular lens from Johnson and Johnson. Uh, very nice material, I like it very much. This is sensor one and there is another one, Technis one that is probably better than this model. Technis one is aspheric and this does not have asphericity. Anyway, I, uh, no financial interest for the products just to inform you what the things are being used. You may use whatever lens you want the patient should get good vision, that is the main goal. And see this, must go behind the eye well and irrigate and aspirate the, you know, place between the intraocular lens and the posterior capsule. Even if you do not want to aspirate, you be afraid of catching posterior capsule, just irrigate and lot of visco will come out in the anterior chamber. Now this is irrigation and aspiration. 
Uh, with bimanual, I never place the aspiration behind, always the irrigation behind and aspiration in front and uh, use irrigation and aspiration together. In this way, we have to do a very nice meticulous cleaning of viscoelastic substance. Otherwise, what will happen is there will be a rise of intraocular pressure in the postoperative period. The patient may have steamy corneal edema, the patient may have pain in the night and lot of other things, lot of discomfort the patient will face. We want comfort of the patient, we want good vision of the patient. We are just, you know, hands of God and we just want to serve the mankind with good vision as ophthalmic surgeons. So here we check the integrity of the wounds and conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy, compassion and great surgical competence.